Hello and welcome to you all hard working doctors taking care of your patients and their loved ones and at the same time working hard towards your educational journey. Today we are going to look at three SBA questions for your emergency medicine boards. This topic is very near and dear to most examiners and especially to the Royal College. So please pay attention for the next few minutes. Which of the following features would lead an infant with a possible brew to be not considered at higher risk of having a serious undiagnosed condition or experiencing recurrent events or adverse outcomes? Age less than one month, EMS on site and performed chest compressions, family history of sudden cardiac death, infant born at 35 weeks of gestation, Second episode of central cyanosis. Take your time and select your option. Let's look at the next question. So you have seen a low risk brew patient. What would you recommend as an ideal management plan for this patient? A. Admit for monitoring overnight. B. Ask parents to purchase a home apnea monitor. C. Ask parents to purchase a home pulse oximeter. D. Prescribe antibiotics for subclinical infection. E. Provide caregiver support and discharge with a follow-up plan. Let's move ahead further and look at the last question for the day. A mother brings a nine week old infant with a history of suddenly becoming floppy as the baby was lying supine on the mother's lap. The child had a change in color after making grunting sounds shortly after he vomited and then again became cheerful. On your examination, the child looks perfectly fine. There are no risk features of sudden cardiac death in the family. What is the most likely diagnosis? Is it a brew high risk? Is it a brew low risk? Factitious illnesses, gastroesophageal reflux, obstructive sleep apnea. Take your time and select an option. So what is brew? If you notice, I've put infant in the bracket. So remember, brew applies only to those who are less than 12 months of age. Anybody above the 12 months of age, above being an infant, the brew diagnosis does not apply. The name itself tells you what exactly is brew. It is brief, so lasting less than one minute duration. Result, that means the child has returned to baseline within a minute and when they present to you, they are asymptomatic, unexplained. That means you tried and hunted for a cause of concern, but you could not find any medical cause. And the event was one of these. I have put it up as A, B, C, D. Altered level of consciousness, breathing that was absent, reduced or irregular, color change, that means the child had pallor or cyanosis, disability that is a change in tone either hypotonic or hypertonic so what are the low risk features before you stratify them as high risk or low risk what you're going to do is a thorough history and a thorough examination always thinking for an alternative diagnosis throughout the process you need to be vigilant of any safeguarding concerns as well if no cause of concerns are found, what are you going to do is see whether they are high risk or low risk. So there should be no concerning feature in history and examination. Plus, the age of the child should be more than two months. The child should be born greater than 32 weeks of gestation with a corrected gestational age of greater than 45 weeks. C. CPR. No CPR should be provided by a healthcare professional. Duration should be less than one month, uh, one minute, sorry, and the event should be the first event. If it's a low risk feature, what you're going to do is you're going to 
counsel the parents and involve them to come to agreed management plan. Avoid admitting the infants to the hospital for observation beyond a few hours. When Loris Brew is there, do not routinely perform blood gases or any other blood test in Loris Brew. But remember to counsel the parent and involve them in management plan. Some people do also recommend to offer life support training to parents, but this is controversial. Some authors say that that brings about more anxiety amongst the parents. So you're going to discharge advice for the parents would be safe sleeping habits, eliminate exposure to tobacco, infant BLS, again I have put it in red, so it's controversial. Specific advice is never shake the infant to resuscitate them and arrange a GP, GP follow-up in the next 48 hours. What are high-risk brew exactly opposite to that of low-risk brew? Age less than two months, born less than 32 weeks of gestation, more than one event, CPR given by a trained professional. You can include all that which is there opposite to that of low-risk brew. So let us now look at the answers given. Remember, brew is a diagnosis of exclusion. Okay. So you need to search for a diagnosis. If you can't find anything, then you can label it as brew. So the first question, the answer was, which is not considered to be high risk is infant born at 35 weeks because the low risk feature is greater than 32 weeks. Second, the answer is provide caregiver support and discharge with a follow up plan. Lastly, this was a tricky one because everything was mentioned like brew. However, this is one of the most common diagnoses which could be missed. So think of gastroesophageal reflux which happens normally immediately after feeding. Child is lying supine, there may be vomiting, they may change in color or have grunting sounds. So this should never be missed. Good luck studying for the exams and uh, peace.